Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to I Did This Instead of Killing Myself, a stand-up comedy podcast based in Greenville, South Carolina. It is the week of October 17th, 2022. My name's David Baker. Thank you for listening this morning. And uh, if it's your first time here, um, this is a local stand-up comedy podcast where we interview a lot of local folks in the upstate. Um, If you uh, feel so inclined... We would love if you subscribed, liked, shared. Appreciate all of that. Uh, It is a beautiful um, weekend here in Greenville. As of this recording, Fall for Greenville is still happening right outside my apartment. There's a stage downstairs and about a billion people there. So a lot of people appreciating Greenville. I hope you had a chance to eat some food and check out some stuff. Greenville is amazing. Well-kept secret that's getting out. I love Greenville. So anyway, our guest today is a staple of the local Greenville scene. Very excited for this guy. Our guest today, Kenneth E. Hughes. Kenneth is a stand-up comedian and founder of 2020 Productions and self-employed, self-proclaimed blind sex symbol. He is the producer of a current stand-up showcase every fourth Sunday of the month called Hilariously Hoppin' at Hoppin' Greenville, and it's an open mic every second Sunday of the month. Um, Kenneth is amazing. Like you said in the uh, his bio there, he's a blind sex symbol. Kenneth describes himself as a triple threat minority. <laughs> he's black, he's blind, and he's gay. Amazing. Um I, uh, that's how he often introduces himself on stage. He's hilarious. He has a guide dog, Buddy. He's involved with Southeastern Guide Dogs, a cause that we talk about on this interview. So check that out. Um, I really love Kenneth. He, uh, he and I, um, had met, he'd been doing comedy before the pandemic and we connected, um, very briefly online, but I've only recently gotten to know him. So I got to know him more in this interview. What I like, um, about him most of all is his positivity he is extremely positive and has a positive outlook on life and you think um of all the people who might be able to say like and be negative and kind of has a real good excuse for it losing his eyesight um that that would be you know a guy like this but um but yeah he uh he's incredibly positive and just uh a lot of great energy and a fun guy to be around at Mike. So I encourage you guys to check him out on stage. Say hi to him. And uh, he made this great promo for this new open mic that's coming. So I'm going to play the promo because I really thought it was great. So this is the promo for the Hilariously Hopping Open Mic coming soon. Ladies and gentlemen, 2020 Productions presents Hilariously Hopping with Kenneth E. Hughes. We keep it hot we keep it hilarious every fourth Sunday at Hoppin' GBL right downtown Greenville. Join us for the next stand-up comedy showcase October 23rd as we feature Andrea, Big Bush, Reese, Timmy, Klausus, starring Dante Anderson and hosted by Greenville's very own Jazz. And you know the fly sex symbol Kennedy Hughes will be in the building. Hop down and have some laughs, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So, yeah, look at that promo, man. Look at that production quality. I think you heard the energy in his voice. He is just uh, he's just fantastic. By the way, so that show's coming up this Sunday. Check it out. And I know all the comedians on that show are fantastic. Uh, Dante and Jazz are great. And also Timmy from Columbia. We haven't had him on the show yet, but Timmy is um, is hilarious, too. So you want to check that show out. All right. So before we get to the interview, though, here's what's going on this week in local comedy, the week of October 17th, 2022. Monday, Coffee Underground, hosted by No Expectations Comedy. That's a seven o'clock show. Get there at 630 sharp or earlier to sign up. Tuesday, we have the Radio Room at eight o'clock, hosted by Bill Reiner, Jeff Thompson, or myself. Eight o'clock show, show up, sign up. Also on Tuesday, we have the Art Bar, hosted by Patrick Fowler in Columbia at 830. Uh, also on Tuesday in Asheville, we have the Odd or the Auditorium, hosted by James Harrod. That's a nine o'clock show. On Wednesday, we have the VFW mic, hosted by Tom Emmons, aka Swamp Rabbit Comedy. That's at six thirty. Comedian sign up at six. That's at the VFW Post ninety two seventy three in Piedmont, South Carolina. 
Also on Wednesday, we have the Disclaimer Open Mic at Asheville Music Hall. It's an 8 o'clock show. Gary Goff is a good point of contact there. Um, on Wednesday, we also have a special show at the Comedy Zone. A hilarious comedian, Bubba Dub, is going to be here. It's a 7.30 show. Doors open at 6.30. Tickets at GreenvilleComedyZone.com. Thursday, we have the Jokes Out Loud show at the Comedy Zone, our local open mic. That's an 8 o'clock show hosted by Brandon Rainwater. That's um, Sign up on that is every Sunday at the uh, Jokes Out Loud Facebook page at 5 o'clock sharp. This Friday, we have Habiba's All Jokes Aside, hosted by Dante Anderson. That's a 9 o'clock show. Um, this Friday and Saturday, we have Michael Yo at the Greenville Comedy Zone. He's got two shows at 6 and 9 and on Friday and two shows on Saturday at 6 and 9. Tickets available at greenvillecomedyzone.com. And this Sunday, as I just mentioned, the um, Hilariously Hoppin' show, uh, hosted by Kenneth Hughes, is this Sunday at 7 o'clock. All right, that's it for local comedy. I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I hope you enjoy my interview with Kenneth Hughes. Here it is. Things will not be edited. Oh. It is the raw, unfiltered Kenneth Hughes. All right, baby. We're rolling. Let's do it. How you doing? <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So Actually, I'm better than wonderful. I, I feel kind of delicious. You feel delicious? Yes. Okay. I'm having a great day, man. That's good. That's good. Me too. Me too. Better now. I'm glad that. Um, yeah, I said it like I told you. I had a little bit of busy office day, but looking forward to like a dedicated podcast conversation. All right. Well, there we what, go. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So Kenneth Hughes, I don't know you that well, but um, we did talk. We just remembered this we had an exchange on facebook messenger going way back um kind of during covid you had shared a clip of you doing stand-up and i think your dog was in it <laughs> yeah do you remember this clip because i haven't i remember you shared it with so me but this saying, is at coffee underground you're saying you remember receiving it but you didn't watch it i did watch it but it was a long time ago <laughs> we just did this and i'm busy can't come on bro i'm just teasing I'm you just I'm just teasing. um yes i do remember that it was i actually that was a fundraiser okay yeah i i performed stand-up for um with my dog yeah, yeah i was bringing awareness to southeastern guide dogs okay yeah so. southeastern guide dogs so this is this will be in the intro and I'm, I'm sure you're sick of getting identified as this but you you're you're um blind you're definitely legally blind completely blind in the left eye and almost completely blind in the right eye yeah the the left eye is gone the right eye is you know it could it could do some things like I, you know, recognize those beautiful coasters and it kind of shocked you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I asked, because uh, when, when you came here, um, you know, you got a ride and, you know, uh, escorted you up and mm -hmm. everything. But then you're able to, to identify different surfaces and things like that. Once I'm not moving, uh, things will come into focus. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, with my condition um, in motion, you know, walking from the street up here, I'm not going to process it much of anything okay but you know if i'm um seated and, and and something is you know across the way i'll i'll be able to you know notice certain things okay. appreciate things yeah i think you have on a black shirt maybe i do yeah i always wear this black shirt yeah oh wow so if you guessed i was wearing one you, <laughs> you could also be right <laughs> that's funny yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man. So um, so you were doing that fundraiser, and that was um, bringing awareness around guide dogs. Is yes, that right? uh, is that a cause you're still involved with? I am actually. I have a uh, another function coming up on October second. Okay. I am um, Buddy and I. He's my dog. Mm -hmm. We are competing in the ultimate race. What's that? It is a race done annually. Um, it is also a nonprofit. They raise funds for uh, various um, things regarding dogs. Buddy and I are participating to raise funds for Southeastern Guide Dogs, okay. which is where I received Buddy. They are, I am being sponsored for the race. So it, people who sponsor um, me and Buddy, you know, our proceeds go to Southeastern Guide Dogs. Okay. So my goal is to raise five thousand dollars 
which um, will go for another person to receive a guide dog. Okay, that's great. And is that fundraiser ongoing, like even after that race on the second? Because there's a chance this might not come out but until then, although I could bump the episode up too. Oh, it'll totally still be going. It'll still be going? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm gotcha. not going to stop until I reach my goal. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say we'd love to shout it out on here and, and get people involved. Um, who I mean, not a ton of people listen to this, but hopefully well, we, some you know, might we be. Well, we might be able to change that. You yeah, know? yeah. You're growing, man. Gaining popularity. Yeah. Little, little by little, people have stuck with it. So it's great, man. Um, yeah. When I, like I said, when we first talked l- last year, you said it was last January. It was might have been this year, this January. This January, yeah, because Which is I had getting you know, to be a while ago. Yeah, we were calling it. We were still in COVID times. Yeah, yeah, and I was, you know, trying to meet the new people. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, I, I told you I'm a COVID comic. I'm one of the <laughs> I love annoying that term. people. Yeah, <laughs> COVID comic. Well, I felt like a lot of people were kind of like um, they did something during COVID. Like people discovered, like you know a new hobby or something mm. they've always wanted to do for me. It was, it was stand up, And then there were a few of us or probably a bunch of us really that started coming out to Mike's in 2020. Um, not everybody's still doing it. But, uh, yeah. That's very interesting. You say that because I took a break during COVID times. Yep. And so when I came back, it was so many faces I didn't know. Right. It was like, wow. It, you know, always exciting to meet new fresh faces and see new talent but yeah it, it felt like like i was a new guy again yeah I, I have been gone for a couple of years yeah <laughs> and you, yeah and you mentioned this before we started recording but you said it's it's hard taking a break and i totally agree with this like you feel like you kind of lost your mojo or you might feel like that was nerves coming back mm. so i was gonna ask you like how um how long were you doing comedy like up until covid and maybe in total 2017 Okay. So three years. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. A friend of mine who is a comedian, we were talking to someone. Someone asked me how long I was doing comedy. And I said, five years. And she said, well, you can't count the two years you were gone. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) So. Yeah. Some people are sticklers when they count the time they've done. I'm going to say five years. Like, did you do it every week? Did you do it how many times a week? I don't know. It's 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 hard to quantify. Well, I'm gonna say I've been doing stand up comedy since 2017. Yeah, okay. you like the way that sounds? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. That's factually accurate and everything else. But okay, so <laughs> but you were an experienced comic doing it three years regularly, and then to take that break. I mean, what was that like? You had like um, several months off until 2021, um, 2022. I mean, what was it like getting back into it? Well. Because I've never taken that much time off since I've started. I've taken a couple of weeks off, and I know how that feels. I, it felt, it, 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 there were levels, you know, there were phases, I should say. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't know that I was going to come back at one point. Really? You thought I, about hanging it up for good? I mean, I went through something. I felt like I was gone too long. I know that sounds silly. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I didn't, because I love the hell out of it. But mm-hmm. I felt like you know you know what it was like when you first started yeah you know when you were able to shake off those nerves and just feel confident and be on the stage and say i got this yeah and then being gone for so long i didn't want to start all over again i (laughs) I felt like oh man yeah i don't want to be that nervous dude on stage yeah but once you hit the stage it comes right back. It's the, like muscle, right the muscle memory came back. It you felt like back, you kind of yeah. picked up right where you had left off yes. previous. That's yeah. really good to know. It just it, you once you get through the set, mm-hmm. then you feel like, oh, I got this. Yeah. And then you're like, why did I go through all that? Why right. was I? And and then also the the you know why we do it anyway. Yeah. You know we're entertainers. Mm-hmm. The goal is to make people laugh. Right. You are you feel like you've done your job when the audience applauses yeah. right so once you do that it's like a high it's a rush yeah you never yeah you don't want it to stop yeah and it's like a light bulb of oh yeah that's like, that's my that's my that's pur- what i miss that's my purpose yeah that's what i miss yeah, yeah. i mean that's yeah. how i feel about it not to get yeah. overly deep with it but i'm like it feels so like and I, I think you probably feel the same it feels so like right in the moment that like all the anxiety you have before the set is like 
it, it just pales in comparison to how good it feels when it's working. And, you know, you get off stage after those sets and you're like, why did I ever doubt that this is what I'm supposed to be doing? It's comparable to nothing. Mm-hmm. Like I always tell people, doing stand-up is the most vulnerable position you can put yourself in. Yes. But it's so rewarding. Mm-hmm. Like it's so worth it. Yeah. And nobody knows what it's like except for fellow comics. That's true. It's yeah. like, so right when I was explaining to you what I went through, not knowing if I was going to come back and then feeling like, oh, wow, I must have been crazy. You totally get that. Yeah, I do. And I've only felt that in smaller, um, you know, windows of, of a break. Um, I, the longest break I had taken in the last, you know, two years and a few months has been like a week and a half or so. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had taken a vacation or, uh, and then had something come up. Um, and I, I do remember coming back from those sets and it's weird. Cause like the longer you take off, I, f- I feel that the more anxiety like grows and the harder it is. And the more those negative voices can kind of get louder to where the voice will say, eh, do you really need to be doing this? Like, it's like, it's like not even me, but it's like this devil on your shoulder. Like, ah, you could give this up. Like, <laughs> do you really want to be putting all this work in, hanging out with these knuckleheads and like, especially when it's not keeping the lights on in your house. Right. Like it has to be a labor of love. Right. It does. Like it does. But yeah. if that's what scares me the most is taking a break, like, like a long one, like you did to where the negative voice overpowers the, uh, the pot. So for me, I kind of treat it like a, like I, I need to be on stage as many times. It's like working out. It's like good health. If I don't do it, you know, the 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 mental health suffers some. No, not in a drastic way, but it's like I'm less balanced. I'm less happy. Mm-hmm. So, and the only way to get it. good at be the only way to get good at doing stand up is by doing more stand up. Yep. It's not something you can be taught. Yeah. And a lot of people want to be taught. They yeah. teach me this, teach me that, and we're all so different. And we all bring different things. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, there's pointers and, you know, there's, you know, somebody can give you a tweaking. Whoop. Yeah. But Notes. sure. Yeah, yeah. You, you only, it's your craft. Yeah. And it's only, you only perfect it by doing it. Yeah. And, you know, not thinking you can write your notes down you can study them, mm-hmm. but it's, you don't know how it's going to be until you actually execute it. For sure. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean, getting philosophical about stand up. I uh I don't know. Some people don't like when we do that. <laughs> cuz I talk about it a lot cuz I love it so much. But I actually I really think it's it actually is uh true like the the uh Gary Shandling talked about this a ton and I've heard other people that like the best way like you're being vulnerable just by doing it. Mm-hmm. But like getting good to me what that means is um finding a way to tap into your authentic self on stage consistently um more so than even the jokes you're writing and telling it's getting to the place where you're so comfortable with who you are uh that you can tap into that on demand and then you'll have better sets more consistently Mm -hmm. um and because it's your authentic self there's only one kenneth hughes there's only one david like nobody could teach you that you just have to Mm -hmm. be confident enough and or not give a fuck enough to let go of that and then if you could do that on a regular basis and have that instinct honed and aren't acting out of fear but acting out of i know i the other thing i think is important is self-love and that's a new one but you got to be really happy you got to love yourself in, in a healthy way that's the thing my therapist is talking to me about recently so have you ever have you ever gone down the self-love rabbit hole of like you know you, i never <laughs> You're like, that sounds stupid. <laughs> that sounds hokey. <laughs> it might. Screw it. I well, don't know. If loving yourself is a very healthy thing, I, I'm going to say I'm I'm pretty healthy there. I, yeah, you love yourself? <laughs> I love myself quite a bit. Well, one of the other uh, things about <laughs> Kenneth, since we're on the topic, is he is a proud gay man. Yeah. Pro- like, and I don't, I don't mean well, to like, know, just throw that out there, because you introduced this on stage as the triple threat. Yes, minority. Yeah, right. That and you know come what across those, totally insensitive. Do you know what? That, do you know what all those minorities are that I have? Do you remember what I am? The three. Mm. Oh well, uh, blind, black, and gay. Yeah, triple threat. Yeah, baby. absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I guess I, I guess I have to clarify something because when I talked about loving myself, I guess I didn't always because you just mentioned that I'm a proud gay man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That well, took, you seem proud and confident. Yeah. In that, that took in some that. work. That wasn't always the case. You know, I, I, you know, I've been here for a long time. You know, I'm 45. So yeah, growing up, you know, these kids, you know, they could just be whatever. and Nobody gives a crap. But it wasn't like that. Yeah. When, when I was growing up. So I tried lo long and hard to not be gay anymore. Um, but I didn't, really, yeah, I didn't know how to do that. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, so well, that's yes, why I, I brought did up, have to, I did have to learn to love myself. So look, well, at, this is therapy. You brought this out. Well, I know. And, and maybe hope, I hope people aren't cringing that, that the podcast talking to a gay person. doesn't always, no, <laughs> no, get it. I mean, like, I mean, I selfishly, I kind of like go where the conversation with what's on my mind and that's been on my mind. So I don't mean to like make it always like about deep therapy ideas or like, you know, make it not funny because this podcast doesn't always just have to be laugh out loud funny. But. Well, I can tell you this. It feels very, whatever you had intended, this feels very organic. So I'm Tight. just following. For organic, that's good. I'm just following your lead. Okay. No, I, I maybe not even qualify that, but, uh, but yeah, man, the, uh, when it comes to therapy and like self esteem, self love and stuff, um, like you seem very confident in who you are. So I assume that you you do have a healthy level of self love and self esteem. Um, Thank you. You say that's not always it's, it hasn't always been the case. No, you know it. it you know it. It took it took some work to get there. Yeah. But um, I am living and loving life. Honestly, um, I used to be a very shy person, mm -hmm. a very bashful person, and I had to shed that. You know, it felt like I wasted so much time sure. just being intimidate or worrying about what people think yeah and yeah you such know, a common theme yeah yeah the older i get the less i don't care and losing my vision i don't know if that's strange but that had a lot to do with it too because i felt like i don't have time to waste there is yeah. so many things that i'm not even able to do that i wish i could do mm -hmm. so i don't want to spend any time sweating this small stuff sure um so, and also, I've been so embarrassed that I'm all maxed out, you know? Yeah. Everything that can happen has happened. Yeah. You know? So there's there's like a hitting bottom element to that, <laughs> yes. which is great. I, yeah. I, I advocate. That's that's why, you know, when we started the podcast, that we'd, we'd ask, and I'm not going to ask you this, you don't have to answer this, but we have questions that um, were just standard for all guests. And one of the ones I would ask is, what's your biggest dumpster fire story? Um, you don't have to tell me it if you don't want to, but maybe later. But um, the reason I asked that question is because I'm a big fan of people um, sharing that stuff um, because hitting bottom and like it, it's a way to like get out of detachment to me. Like if, if you, you know, go through a really low point, mm -hmm. you realize, you know, well, I'm still standing. Nothing, you know, I can bounce back from that. Um. Mm. I don't know how to make that funny, though. No, it doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't like, have to be funny. Like, like hitting people with cars. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's happened. I said people, yes, plural. Because when I was losing what? my, when I first started losing my vision, I didn't know what was happening to me. Okay. So, like, you know, I was just that, going through life doing what I do, and yeah, boom, oh my god, and there's a person in the, yeah. Uh, that's horrifying. Yes, very horrifying. That's why I have anxiety okay? today. Yes. Okay. Everybody kinda, that, that I hit is, is alive. But that's why I stopped driving because yeah. I didn't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the biggest, the scariest incidents was driving a car at night and I went over a railroad crossing and I ran through the arm and it smacked the windshield. Pow! And I never knew where the train was. Like, oh my God! Like, so so it stopped your car before you were on the tracks. No, or it did came you go down the, as I was? Crossing. Did, you, did you go all the way through and yes. over? Yeah, and I could you remember. hear the uh, the train? I have my music up. <laughs> you had your music up, but so you made it through. I made but it you through. You have no idea. It, my, it cracked how my windshield, close that train but I have was. no. That was the scariest part. Not only just the just. Uh, Railroad crossing smacking your windshield is terrifying. Right. But it was like, oh my God, where was the damn train? How I don't know how close I was. Yeah. I never yet. So needless to say, I I, I stopped driving soon after that. It's yeah. not good. How old were you when you started losing your vision? Um 
Well, I learned that I had a genetic disorder when I was about 24. Okay. And it was something I was born with, but I didn't know that I had it until then. I wasn't diagnosed until then. And I was considered legally blind when I was 30. Yeah, just a little younger than you are now. Right. Um, and then from the time you were 30, like how much of your sight did you have until now? Um, and that was a very tough thing because there's no like gauge, no like, oh, this is how much I can see now. There's no, yeah. it's, it, and for someone like who loses, you know, I'm so sorry. We're, this is totally not comical it's <laughs> fine, dude, it's fine. <laughs> organic bro <It's> okay. <laughs> so with that um you know people think like oh you either can see or you can't which there's a lot of conditions where it's that way but somebody like me i lose so little over the course of my life that's where a lot of those embarrassing things were happening right because you adapt and adjust to yeah. what you can do right. and what you're comfortable with but it changes mm -hmm. it changes constantly and i don't know when that is and then sometimes i'll be a little too confident and that's where accidents are happening or right. you know i'm you know i'll sit down at the wrong table or people are having dinner or yeah you know get in the wrong car and yeah. you know remember i told you i'm all maxed out i don't get embarrassed anymore yeah because i've done just about everything yeah <laughs> so people are looking at me like what sometimes i just explain oh i'm so sorry i'm blind yeah yes don't judge me yeah <laughs> so i'm not dangerous it, right yeah right but, you know, I just try to... Another reason why I let people know is because I don't want people to think I'm a pervert. Yeah. Because sometimes I bump into people. And there's... Yeah. See, the thing about having a condition like mine, people don't know because they think you're supposed to look a certain way. I don't have shades. I'm not bopping my head around like Stevie Wonder. Yeah. So, it's hard to tell. So, so it's hard to tell. So accidents will happen. And then I, I am so sorry. I thought you were someone else. Right. I'm blind. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people don't believe me. Yeah. So. It's all this swag, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, dude. You do have all this swag. It's fantastic. <laughs> and you have swag on stage. I love your 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 uh, confidence and delivery on stage. I appreciate that. Which which must take a lot if you if you can't really see the audience um, or definitely not see their faces. <laughs> that's funny because. You're projecting out, you know. and Yeah, that's funny that you say that because, as you know, we are fed by that applause. Mm -hmm. that is the fuel that's when you know that you're doing it but not audience not all audiences are the same not all rooms are the same some people could really be feeling it and smiling yeah and i can't hear that yeah obviously i can't see that so it kind of makes you work harder it's yeah. like so i make sure i just keep going because there's been times where i'll come off stage and I felt like, oh, man, I didn't have them. And then people were like, oh, man, I loved you. You were great. And I'm like, really? Yeah. You could have said that while I was up there. So you learn early yeah. on that, you know, you're not always going to hear ha ha. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you, you there might be grins and things out there. So yeah. I just keep moving. Yeah. I mean, for what it's worth, I, you know, every time I've seen you, well, you've gotten laughs anyway, but the people are smart. So if there's ever <laughs> any doubt, you're likable. So yeah. that's great. And, uh. I um yeah, I I I wanted to ask about the um you said you were before you were kind of more nervous and uh you kind of got out of that mm -hmm. and now you're at where you're at today. What what was it that got you to kind of let go of some of that fear and and just how you were living to like now? I mean, was it the, the losing of your sight? Was it comedy? Um, was it a combination of a bunch of things? Like, how long did it take? Are you talking about in life in general? Or life in general, that? like your self-esteem kind of being back to where you are, the confident person you are today, compared to how you had been, like you said. I think it's a combination of many things. I think, you know, life experiences, maturity, just coming to your own. Um, yeah. You know, self-reflection. I do think my vision, um, losing it, had a lot to do with not being so consumed with things that don't matter as much mm -hmm. because you know that's losing your sight is kind of a big deal and yeah I, I I'll tell you this David 
I didn't want it to change me being um, like I, 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 I didn't want it to change who I am. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I'm a social person. I'm an active person. I love people. I like to laugh. I like to entertain. I like to dance. I like to travel, you know, all these things that it, that's who I am. I didn't want this to change any of that. Right. I knew that I was not going to be a person who's mad at the world. I wasn't going to be a person who, um, depressed I just didn't want to waste any time and feeling like that kind of helped in other areas if that makes any sense I hope I articulated yeah. that well no totally like when I felt like I didn't have time to waste mm -hmm. I want to live life to the fullest then you can't help but be confident yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean yeah yeah it's like somebody who's been uh um given a uh you know like a terminal illness and they, they, oh, you know, I, I'm, I have no, not that this is terminal, but in a, in a, in a you know, lesser yeah. sense, but still significant. You hear those people like, you know, they, they want to appreciate every moment and want to, yeah, um, you know, take advantage of time. I tell, I'll tell you this. I remember joining a discussion group. Mm -hmm. It was with other individuals who have. Uh, low vision, mm -hmm. no vision, uh, et cetera. And it just seemed gloomy to me. Really? It seemed very, and no, this is not me passing any judgment because I, you know, I, I hurt for them. I, I, I don't want anybody to feel that way, but I knew that group wasn't for me because yeah. that's not who I was and where I needed to be. Yeah. And I just like, I'm, and, and this was very early on. They were right. like, oh, yeah, you should join a discretion group to be around other people who are experiencing what you're experiencing. Right. And those people were depressing. Yeah. I'm like, this is not the group for me. Yeah. So it kind of like made well, me go the other way. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask you, like, if, if other, uh, you know, people that other blind people, if they have the same outlook as you, if, the, if that's pretty common or, you know, if it's more common for people to go overly negative. I don't know that many blind people, to mm -hmm. be honest. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, you know, there's another. Obviously, People you know, in that group only. But. Yeah, uh, you know, that was just that was a time that was many years ago. But mm -hmm. in my personal life, um, got Aaron Q. Yeah, what Aaron Q. Aaron, Aaron Quillen. Yeah. First, uh, I don't know if it's okay with him, but I always call him Quilla. Quilla. Yeah, that's just a <laughs> nickname I gave him. Yeah, he, like he, he responds. Yeah, and it's yeah. so funny because I can tell that he sees better than I do. Yeah, I think he I does. don't even know. Yeah. I know um, it is so funny because he's usually guiding me. He's yeah. really kind. Yeah. And so when there's no one around, he's always very helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, people make those jokes. Oh, look at the blind leading the blind. Yeah. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> but I totally like I, re I rely on Quilla sometimes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I remember being where he is. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's funny. I always think that we kind of laugh at ourselves when he's like, you know, we were walking through comedy yeah. zone. And <laughs> he's done. He's done an interview on the on the show. Um, so you guys have the same diagnosis? No, no, it's different. we do not. Okay. I don't know what I can't remember what his diagnosis yeah. is, but I I remember that much that it is not the same because then you. I would remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was one of the guys that um, came in when I was gone. Okay. Yeah, he's one of the COVID comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. He we're did. gonna make I, that. We're gonna make that a thing. COVID comics. The COVID comics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember meeting him. Yeah, for sure. He, well, uh, I heard about him before I met him. They're like, you know, there's another blind comic now. Yeah, I had heard that. I was like, oh, I, really? I I'm gonna break his before COVID as well a little bit, but he definitely hit, started. Oh, really? He did be much more frequently. Oh, okay. Well, maybe yeah. he was. Okay. So he could be a COVID comic. Uh, technically too but technically yeah well if, if we're wrong we'll hear from him if, if we're wrong yeah if he still uh listens to the show but, uh, <laughs> yeah i was gonna say watch the show listen to the show. <laughs> yeah man that's that's uh that's really cool what age do you think you got it what do you, what age do you think you you had it this new perspective um like i said man it, it's been different stages i think you know brick by brick you know the different 30s 30 30 mm -hmm. yeah 30 i think yeah. that's an interesting time for a lot of people yeah you know? and then you were mentioning 
nervousness on stage. Yeah. One of the things that used to make me nervous uh-huh. was not being nervous. Okay. I, <laughs> did that make any? It I don't does. know if that makes any sense, but I remember asking people, when would the nerves, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, um, that was a really great set, you know, wow, you're killing it or whatever. And I'm like, when do I stop getting nervous, though? Yeah. And then I felt like, I don't know. It, it Part of me wanted to say, well, if you have to care enough to do a good job. Yeah. And I never wanted to be that guy that never gave it my all. Like, oh, whatever. If I don't do good, who cares? Yeah. So part of, I thought, some of the nerves were healthy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. So I never wanted to just get cocky and just be like, I got this. I don't care. Whatever. I'm just do my thing. If they don't like me, they don't like me. I never wanted to be that guy. Yeah. I always want to try to win them over. Yeah. So I didn't want to get too comfortable, too complacent. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fine line between like being free and, and at ease versus being overconfident. And because uh, I, I cocky like, or not caring, yeah, no, I know. I learned that in my first year, probably like when I felt really good about a set, that's when I'd get nervous because I wasn't nervous. I'd be like, Yeah, Ooh. so you know exactly, I know exactly what you mean, you know exactly, yeah, because uh, I've done it before where I've been overly confident, like, Oh, yeah, they're gonna eat this up, and then you bomb. It's so weird. Like, the audience knows you think too highly of yourself in how, in how you're, you're mode is when you hit the stage and they just don't like you <laughs> and then what if about with- yourself for real or if you're you're, you're the cocky version mm-hmm. of whatever you are dude the audience sniffs that out that's why i love stand-up there's no it's so pure like there's no hiding from anything like there's gotta, no rules and there's no rules the only rule is to be funny like every we're all different everybody has their own style like most mm-hmm. of the things i talk about is real yeah. Like, I just talk about Dude, yeah. life and how it affects me. Yeah. You know, just being a black, blind gay man in yeah. South Carolina. I almost forgot. <laughs> I was. Did you notice I was, like, trying to remember my minority statuses? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just BBG. kidding. BBG, baby. BBG, yeah. Um, well, I don't want to add any more of those because that will mean i have another condition <laughs> so i'm i'm good with just being bbg B- i don't need anything extra you know notorious bbg i like it i like it too man yeah well i could take that out at the end yeah the notorious bbg yeah man that's great but i i agree with you too man i almost feel like uh oh that's my leg see how that goes <laughs> see you know <laughs> And now you know that I'm not a pervert. I was reaching for my walker. Yeah, don't get too excited, Ken. This is, uh, Wait, oh, because these are swivel chairs. They're swivel chairs. I moved away from my water. Your water's to the left. Left? Let me do it. You don't guide disabled <laughs> people. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm not one of those guys. I don't want to help you cheat. <laughs> you can help me find my water. That'd be fine. You just set it on a book. Coaster to the left. Left. Forward. Okay, see, this is just all I got the it. studio time being wasted, me trying to find the coaster. No, you're good, man. That's interesting review. This will be on YouTube as well, so we got the video going. Oh, people are going to see me? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, why didn't you tell me I would have worn a nicer shirt? I got like The shirt's nice, dude. I'm wearing sweats. Don't worry. You know I'm you extra. You look great. You, you look know great. I'm extra. I already, I already like, had it framed up on the camera. You look fantastic. Oh, man. Okay. But um, So now my posture... So you gotta tell, my posture's terrible. You got to tell blind people things, man. I didn't know, you know, because I'm, you, you know, I go by Kenneth E. Hughes. So if yeah. I got to say my middle initial, you know I'm extra. Yeah. I don't do anything halfway. Where's the camera? K-E-G. The camera's, um, yeah, it's, it's like getting both of us at like a 45 degree angle. So. I just wanted them to see my, you know, my 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 smile. My yeah, girl. yeah, you got a beautiful smile. Thank you, man. That's right. All right. Shit, I forgot what we were talking about. Comedy, comedy, and being overconfident versus yeah, um, those uh, yeah, it's so weird how the audience can tell the difference. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I I remembered. Um, writing material. Um, you know, I. <laughs> I kind of feel like lately, like I've been trying to go very like authentic to like, you know, real stuff that I'm thinking and uh, 
I'm, I'm almost like as I'm expressing these things, I'm like that these aren't even necessarily jokes yet. I'm trying to find the funny and just I'm I'm just trying to let it out and see what happens. Um, and I, I I almost feel like a hack sometimes. I'm like I'm not writing jokes um, in this what I'm doing right this second. I don't I never really loved writing jokey jokes per se. I know what you mean. You know like, the good old fashioned classic punchlines after. You know and, you're talking about like the old fashioned classic jokes where. Yeah, you know, there's this, and then there's the setup, like a know. Mitch Hedberg joke, like yeah. an elevator or an escalator can never be broken; it can only become stairs. I don't. Sorry for the convenience. I don't do those either. I appreciate them. <laughs> yeah, I love that type of clever wittiness. Yeah, I, but that's not my style either. Mm-hmm. Um, which is one of the great things about stand-up comedy. We're all different. Mm-hmm. Um, being that I, my writing process is a little different mm-hmm. um, because I tend to not write things down because I, you know, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably voice memos. Do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. So I will record things. Sometimes I'll text things to myself, read it back. I'll write down the bullets and, you know, um, the gist of what I want to convey, and then I will record myself. Mm-hmm. Then I will recite them yeah. as if I have an audience. Right. Like, you know how a lot of guys will go to the shows and they have their notes and they'll go over them right before they go on stage? I don't, I can't do that. Right. So I'll do my set before I leave the house. Yeah. I'll just do it. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. yeah, it has to I, be up here. I, I, a lot of it is memory. Yeah, I do the same thing. I, yeah. um, I I look like a crazy person, I'm sure, but I will set up my phone. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I'll, I, 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 I'm with you on not reading through the notes because I don't, that doesn't, I mean, I'll read through it to try and get the specific statements that I think are going to be funny, but I'll, to rehearse it though, I don't read it. I'll I'll try to perform it as if there's somebody here and I'll actually like it'll be a video so I'll watch myself saying it and I'll be like okay is that am I doing that authentically <laughs> like I'm supposed to yeah or am I uncomfortable and with how am I am I comfortable with what I'm trying to get across and uh yeah but I've never been like a word for word type person until I until the joke's like done then right. I then I'm pretty yeah. you know precise but um, I like to be precise with it too because a lot of times I can't see the light yeah. So I yeah. like to try to make sure I'm going to wrap it up real good. And then, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of sp- spontaneity that you can use in your show. So mm-hmm. certain things go shorter or longer. But Yeah. Um, spontaneity is great. It yeah. helps that's the keep the set thing. alive because, yeah. But that's so funny that you said you probably look crazy because it kind of feels crazy. It does. It doesn't feel like a very natural thing to be doing. No. And that's why when during COVID times... When people were doing like Zoom shows, mm-hmm. I didn't participate in any of that. Yeah, it didn't feel right. To me. Yeah, <laughs> like not that it was bad mm-hmm. for me. I just didn't. I I get the energy from a live audience. Yeah, and I I think that I would have felt goofy. Yeah, doing it. I don't know. Did you perform that way? At I all? did one uh, Zoom show, and um, Geo Wagner's uh, Zoom show, and it was horrible. <laughs> Horrible show or? No, it was good because the, the material was good and all the comics were good. But the horrible part was the lack of uh, just, you know. It just doesn't feel audience like energy. you don't know. You you, you can't I re- feel I the don't, energy. There's certain points in my set where I won't move on until I get a reaction. <laughs> I'll be like just staring at him like, yeah? Like, what, am I nuts? Like, what? You, right? You guys agree with me? Like, Right. And they'll smile at least, or then I'll be like, okay. Yeah. Like, then I'll you got them, and then you move on. Yeah, right. So like, you're working to do that. Yeah. The, it hasn't ended until they laugh. Right. Is that, that kind of how it is? Or give me something. Yeah. If it's brand new material, they might be like, dude, you're insane. This is not good. And I'm like, all right, come on. Like, this, yeah, I'm right. Come on. And no, yeah. I'm doing that more now lately. But uh, the one thing I did one time, and I don't know if this is good, I did it unintentionally, but. Um, the mic stand will be in the middle of the stage and uh, I'll address them and I won't move the mic stand or move behind, from behind the microphone until they like give a big reaction. 
Wow. Yeah. So, and then once they do that, then I'll move the mic stand and get into the set. But it's like, I'm not going to go anywhere until you're like on board with this versus just starting off in a material and, and going, going, going. So you know, that can kind of, I don't know. I thought that was helpful to me anyway. This is funny because you were saying you didn't want to get too philosophical. Like I said, it just goes wherever it goes. Yeah. This and is this is kind of technical, but yeah, this yeah. is kind of, you know, like a little workshop. It is. Yeah. Uh, we never talk about the actual technical parts of it. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. It's, it's, it's nice because you and I, we haven't talked a lot. Yeah. Because we're always in a dark yeah. um, theater. Yeah. Waiting for our turn. Yeah. And you're not supposed to be talking when someone is on stage right. anyway. Yeah. So, like, this is obviously when you, you know, being that we're in the same field, yeah. this is a natural thing for us to talk this way because yeah. normally when we see each other, we're both trying to make people laugh. Yeah. And then... Well, we're distracted by thinking about other stuff. Other stuff. Other and then and, and then also then when it's not your turn, you're not supposed to be talking anyway. Right. Yeah. Most of the things you've ever... We talked about was, hey, how you doing? Yeah. And then you helped me to the bar or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take me to get my gin and tonic or to my seat. For sure, man. That's a good point, too, about like the, the comedy hang. I think that's a really important thing people talk about. And mm -hmm. I think it's true here in Greenville is like uh, I've made more friends with people talking after shows. Right. Where we can go to karaoke, even oh, like right, the Sharkies, Sharkies, yeah, yeah. You've been a couple of times, right? I, you know what, I, you, I have just been reminded that that's what we used to do after the shows. Okay, I, I haven't done it since I've been back. Well, it's still going, man. That's the thing. You are know, you on the show tomorrow? Yes, you are. Okay, I and I'm going to Sharkies. Okay, you need to go. I won't be there. I have another oh, man. show uh, in North Carolina. It's a drive, but I'll be, I'll be gone. But uh, next week I'll be there if there is a show next week. Um, but yeah, man, the, the hang afterwards, like, that's a really good, because you don't get to know people just at the mic. No. You got to hang out after, which yeah. not everybody did you can. get? Uh, did you get on the mic at karaoke? Oh. Uh, can you sing? I can I can carry a tune. I try not, to, like, I don't know. I, did, I don't always like to sign up because it's like, I you know, just did a set, kind of got enough. I sing all the time at home. I actually sing a lot. Do like you karaoke? My friends get audios of me singing. <laughs> they get videos of me singing and dancing. Yeah. Like, it's no joke. It's, yeah. like, totally choreographed. Yeah. Like, like an entire song. Yeah. Can I sing? No. Yeah. Do I enjoy doing it? Yeah. Yes. For sure. I have friends who love it, and I have friends who tell me, please don't send me any more yeah. videos. Like, yeah. you know, they yeah. just, yeah. But, but when I get to karaoke, I freeze. Oh, so we really? talk about confidence. You talk about confidence. Yeah, being on stage doing stand up. I'm not the same at karaoke. I haven't yeah. mastered that. Yeah, I don't know why. You know why? Because I can't see the damn words. Yeah. So you got to have a song you got down. Yeah, and then it's like I don't know. You know what? That's my next thing. I'm gonna master, man. Okay. Is I want to sh um, straight up do karaoke like I sing and dance in my living room. Yeah. No, absolutely you should. I mean, I feel the same. I feel a little bit of nerves compared to a stand-up stage. I mean, I can do it, and I, I I try to put it out of my mind. I hate when people who go to karaoke who actually sing amazing. <laughs> it's like, go away. Yeah, I hear you, dude. It's like, get a gig already. Although, although I don't want to hate because there's one comic who's amazing. So Alexis Ramirez. Oh, she can sing? She can sing amazing. Oh, well, well she's well. one of us anyway, so, she, you know. She is. She's a comic, too, so it's good. But she's yeah. very good. And sometimes I'll go up and do a duet with her, and I really like that because it's like, let pressure's off. She can carry the song if I start to suck, and then you know it's just really fun, just me and her, and uh, hopefully the audience or people watching can like have fun watching, even though I'm not that good at singing. And I have to clarify, I don't necessarily get nervous at karaoke. I just don't let loose. Yeah. Like, why am I stiff? Yeah. And mind you, obviously I'm not a singer. Yeah, <laughs> or performer, but I'm not giving the same energy. Yeah, I think like, that'd be a good thing for you to get over then. Yeah, it's it, like because you are in that mode when you're by yourself singing and dancing. Yeah, and, and it's like why to let go in front of people? It's another degree of like. And then I'm like just standing there, like finding yourself, and it's yeah. like, nah, nah, I got this. Yeah, dude. Well, that's the the girl I mentioned, Alexis. Um, that was actually one of the first things I noticed was that she was awesome on stage. Yeah, well, she was great on stage in comedy, but I felt like you know she was like 
more um, more herself and more confident. And then that really came out when she sang karaoke. Oh, I see but what you're she saying. She belted it out and did not care at all. And I just thought it was really beautiful oh. because it was like she was wow. free in herself and everybody was drawn to it because she's a good singer. Wow. So I was like, I felt like stand-up helped karaoke or maybe they help each other. But... Um, I see what you mean. Yeah, but there's something about singing and dancing that I really love. Because, um, and I, I've, I want to ask you about this specifically because, you know, um, I felt like when I stopped drinking, and when I started doing comedy, I appreciated music way more. Because when I go out to the bars, I'm not getting drunk anymore. Like, oh yeah, I'm enjoying other aspects. I'm enjoying like real people conversations, and then music to me is really more beautiful. And I, I kind of wondered if that was true for you, losing one of your senses to a great degree. Like, I've always been you, a I've always been a big lover of music. Did you appreciate it more once you started um, losing your sight? I I can't say that was my experience. Okay. Like I I just love music. Okay. Um, I'm I'm really into it. I'm kind of like a music historian. That's great. Well, <laughs> to a certain degree. Music historian. Well, it depends on it has to be the genre. Like obviously you have to know about that, you know what I mean? Like I don't know everything about everything, but I'm just like I don't just like something. I I like really like it. I want to know who wrote it, yeah. who produced it, year it came out, year, you know, I just okay. like yeah, I go all in. Yeah. But um yeah, that's very interesting you say that because I kind of feel like I did not get the right gift or I didn't get a gift that I should have had. I, I'm supposed to be a good singer. Yeah. I don't know what the hell happened, but it's almost like I am going to be able to hit notes before I leave this earth. Right. I don't know if I'm going to take lessons, but people tell me I'm, I'm tone deaf. They say I don't sound terrible, but I'm just a little tone deaf. Okay. But, you know, I think I sound good, but again, yeah. yeah. So I'm blind, blind and deaf, I guess. Um, <laughs> but someone told me you can't teach that. Like if you're tone really? deaf, it's just done because you can't hear the notes. So like they say, I go all over the place cause I can't hear it. But have you ever had formal no. training? Yeah. Maybe it's worth a second uh, look at that. I don't know. Um, man, I wish I could say cause I took choir growing up and I think that helped me have a better idea of like music notes and like what's, what's correct versus not. I mean, I can't read music. I was in but. choir a couple of times, and I remember people told me I was throwing them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like, have rhythm? Yes. You got rhythm. Yes. Okay. Then it's just the notes. Yeah, it's just the notes. Yeah. Um, kind of my, my partner whistles really well. Okay. Like, it sounds like an instrument. Like, it's pretty. Uh-huh. Like, when he whistles a tune, it's beautiful. Yeah. Sometimes when he's whistling, it can get me on tune. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm. I got you. It's like a—I don't know how he whistles. It's like a—it's like an instrument. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, if, yeah, if he can get you in tune with just you know whistling, yeah, you should take some lessons, man. I I'm gonna you, take I some lessons. You, I bet you could dial that in. I'm gonna take some lessons, man. Like I said, I'm—I'm I'm trying to live. I'm not trying to survive. I want to do it all, baby. Yeah. I want brand new socks and draws. Yeah. So I'm yeah. gonna take some. I'm gonna take um, singing lessons. I want to learn how to play something. Maybe a bass. I love the bass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, I'm kind of a maximizer too now. Like, I don't know. Um, feels like, uh, yeah. Um, things, things just start to open up when you do what you actually love to do. And then more stuff presents itself. Like, man, I'd love to do this and that. And I don't have enough time to do it all now versus being kind of in a miserable state most of the time. That's a good thing. Yeah. I don't really have time to be sad. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, um, it's useless. Yeah, if you're depressed, fill up your plate with stuff and see what happens. Just and that is shit. not, like I said, that is not to be insensitive to what other people are going through. No. But that's not what I mean. Like, no. It's I, not, I, didn't, I hope I didn't sound arrogant. No, I didn't but think it like, that way. And hopefully, okay. people, hopefully people didn't <laughs> yeah. take what I said that way either. It's yeah. just I've been idle. Because we all go through things. Like I told you, I suffer from anxiety. Mm-hmm. You know, And it, it's very common with people who yeah. lose their vision. Like yeah. You don't know what's coming out at you. you you're tripping all the time. Like yeah. I said, I've I've had car accidents in abundance. Yeah. Other automobiles and a couple of pedestrians mm-hmm. that are fine. Yeah. Doing well, by the way. Mm-hmm. I yes, I didn't hurt anyone severely. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, um, but yeah, that did something to me, man. It made me nervous. Yeah. 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 And it's I didn't want to carry that guilt if if I ever did cause someone great harm. Right. I was like, whew. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so you're a lover of music. Yes. What what kind of music do you like? Well, Artists, genres. I like so many different genres. I guess you know, being a true lover of music, you know, it's an art form. There's so many different types of sounds and things, but you know, I like classic soul. Classic soul. Yes. Um, I like. I have different favorites for different things. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite lyricist is Stevie Wonder. Okay. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I, you know, but in general, just so many different kinds of music. Now, actually, I'm fanatical about Michael Jackson. Oh, dude, I love Michael Jackson. Like, I wanted I to be Michael Jackson. Like, yeah. um, I, yeah, so... I know all things Michael. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing you can tell me about Michael Jackson that I don't know. Yeah. It's like people will, um, yeah. So, that, that, that's, Michael's my dude. Yeah. That if makes you're, me. If you're 45, in the 90s, he was kind of 80s, late 80s, 90s. Was that when he was like kind of in his prime? Yes. The mm -hmm. 80s, yes. Yeah. But, and it's so funny because Michael has been, um, he was around for so long, the long, like you talk about longevity, yeah, yeah. you know, like, you know, my parents listened to Michael before I was born, you know right. what I mean? So yeah. it was like, like he was somebody that was kind of always there, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I was really into Michael Jackson. Yeah. Well, am still really into Michael yeah, Jackson, but I, I was alive when Michael was really hot. Yeah. Like to me, Michael Jackson never wasn't hot though. Yeah. Like even when he wasn't as popular, like stuff that he was putting out to me was underrated oh but like <laughs> but judging by his standards and his prime people were considering oh yeah he's done but not to me no i i don't think <laughs> i think all of his stuff is 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 great i right. mean i um now when i was a little kid i was afraid of the video thriller okay yeah yeah I, well we see again like a halloween themed video right and, and the werewolf at the beginning of the song and the and yeah. mind you we grew up in different times. You guys are a little desensitized to things because you see more. Yeah. So that shit was scary. Can we cut? Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know if this was Disney, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I remember, <laughs> see, my, I, I live next door from my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And so for whatever reason, I didn't pay attention. I always ended up over there at night and I would be scared to walk home. Mm -hmm. And my uncle used to scare me and make me dance. My uncle Glenn, he would say, if I didn't dance... The zombies were going to get me right. on my way home. Right. So then I would, you know, I would dance because yeah. that's what he told me. And then when I would go home, I would book, man. I would get it. Uh, man. I, and you then the thriller I, dance? Well, that's I, was, you I, was, I was trying to. I was doing something. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, my sister would have to watch me. I would call home. Yeah. And, um, I would say, watch me, I'm coming home. And my parents would make her go on the porch and watch me. She would be so freaking irritated. Yeah. And then, and then I would, when I didn't see her, on the porch, I would call and say, she's not watching me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that. you know what's so funny? I always tell people, like, I come from a funny family. As I just told you, that was really silly. Yeah. Life. Mind you, he's um, not a terrible person. I said uncle. But it, my I have some aunts and uncles that are not that much older than me. My <laughs> So my grandma had a lot of kids. Okay. So she was still having children when her children were having children. Okay. So my uncle was very, he was a little older than us. Okay. So wasn't some adult. I got you. Tormenting a child. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> You're thinking like, yeah. damn, that was really mean of your uncle. I don't know. I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's I, funny. I've had some uncles that tormented me and there yeah. was. Oh man, did they flip gap. their, did they flip their eyelids back upside down? Like they used to do that to me. Oh no. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. I was moving to Green Bay, Wisconsin, and he told me something about how they're all, I don't know, weird up there. And, like, told me something about, like, that wasn't true at all, about a city I was moving to. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was dysfunctional. Oh, but totally. You know, my uncle used to drive us out into the middle of nowhere, and there's this hill on a place called Sullivan Road. And he made up these monster people who lived on sullivan road behind a trailer <laughs> and then he would drive us there and then pretend like he ran out of gas yeah and it was like and then you know he said they had big stomachs and big feet and long teeth and like they, they run real fast they can catch cars 
Yeah, so yeah, I can't even. That's like trauma, dude. Yeah, like I would like get scared whenever he would say Sullivan Road, Sullivan Road. Why yeah. would you do that to a child? Yeah, yeah, that stuff sticks with you. Well, you know, I can tell you, like I always tell people, I come from like a funny family. Like mm-hmm. we're all so very. How many siblings do you have? One brother, one sister. Okay. And we loved to we we used to play a game called Make Me Laugh. Mm-hmm. You know who you know you would try to have a straight face while the other person tried to make you laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad is a very hilarious person he's a he's a very funny person he Mm -hmm. probably should have been doing stand-up yeah but i remember being scared um uh, our downstairs bathroom was under construction Mm -hmm. so i didn't like to go upstairs when no one was up there to use the bathroom i'd be afraid i thought something was gonna get me yeah and then my dad told me to take a knife and if something you know tried to do something to me i had the knife (laughs) (laughs) and it was funny because i remember being about five years old, and he handled me. He handed me a little butter knife, yeah. and I took it up there like it was my weapon. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he was just cracking up. Yeah. But he was like, he was trying to tell me to be brave. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. You take your little butter knife. It's like you, it's like you're a knight, a medieval knight with his sword. I just had to pee. Confronting the yeah. Whatever was gonna do something to me, I just had to pee. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just let me pee, monsters, dude. It's fine. Yeah. So, um. I don't think I asked you this. My brain's fried. But you had, um, you know, going back to 2017, why did you start doing comedy? I needed an outlet. I felt um, I was going through a time where I was in the house a lot. Like, remember I told you my condition gets worse and worse. Yeah. And then I found myself not, you know, I used to be able to just get out and run even as a visually disabled person Mm -hmm. and um my vision got worse and so it was more of a you know i need to find something you know i wasn't working anymore um you know there's a few years after i i um left um my job i was a flight attendant before i lost my vision okay so obviously i was not able to do that anymore Mm mm-hmm and I was, uh, I tried to start my own business. I was making soap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen Fight Club? I did not see Fight Club. I know that everybody has, so don't judge me. No, you're good. They make soap in that. Okay. And there's also, you need to watch the movie. So, I chill out for Fight Club because I, I love the themes in it. And it's like, I think it's good. Some people think it's corny or I don't, I don't know. But there's this. I mean, I just can't imagine being it. in a club where people like, fight me like we're not friends if you hurt me <laughs> it's like well the beginning of that movie they go into support groups oh, okay and it's a lot of like you know people consoling each other very like negative kind of like the the group you described and then they break out of it and form this other group that's the fight club and they uh ah. they approach it totally differently but there's all these there's all these metaphors in the movie about letting go of like you know modern uh materialism and what other people think it's all gonna burn anyway like you know there's a lot of nihilistic themes and transcending the meaninglessness through this club and then there's and then it goes too far so the movie makes a point about you can take something like that too far and but anyway it's a really good movie so and you you used to make soap so i think i think you're well so when i was so i was you know, just trying different things, you yeah. know. Sorry to Going to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I drilled that. Oh, no, what? no. Hey, like, yeah. this is what we, like, it has to be organic, right? Yeah, for sure. So, I, you know, like I said, I'm a naturally silly person. Mm-hmm. So, I'm never not clowning around. Yeah. So, I was like, why don't I just do, and I'm a lover of comedy. Yeah. Stan, uh, and I was actually looking for a sketch. Uh, I've, my whole life, I was always into um, SNL, you know, Die Hard, um, and I'm thinking, like, maybe I can, like, you know, take some classes and sketch comedy. Mm-hmm. So I just Googled some Greenville comedy, and it took me to um, an improv um, community. Was it Alchemy? Yes. Nice. Um, so I joined Alchemy for a little while. I took classes doing Alchemy. I didn't know anything about improv. I just jumped in head first. And I remember the first day... I didn't know what it was going to be like. I thought we were going to be like in class, like getting, you know, like lectured or something. And then like day one, like we were supposed to get up and like do stuff. And I was like, um, 
if I could see, I would have like left. <laughs> like I yeah. was so like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Yeah. But of God, and then I remember, you know, um, we had our first um, one-on-one showcase. And they were, uh, I'm like, wait a minute, we have to perform downtown? And the instructor was like, yeah. I'm like, well, who's going to be there? And he's like, well, hopefully all your friends and family. I'm like, ah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Isn't that? Oh. So it was funny. So it was one of those things. You just got to shake those nerves off. Yeah. But I learned from, and mind you, I still have friends who do it. Um, but I learned while I was in classes that they, someone thought that they offered stand up yeah. because it's the same theater as no expectations. Right. And they were like, Oh, you know, they do stand up um on Monday nights. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Really? Yeah. So a few of us in uh, I think I was in three oh one by this point. Yeah. A few of us um decided to go do open mic. Mm-hmm. We were gonna challenge each other to do open mic. And two of us showed up. Right. <laughs> and then I was gonna, you know, back out. And the friend of mine who said um uh, who was with me he's like if you don't do this you won't ever um forgive yourself this is your one shot you have to do this blah 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 he so, said that to you to get on stage that night yes yeah uh, oh yeah when we had already prepared to do it this was the night we we're gonna do it oh okay. yeah so we 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 showed up to do open mic yeah and i was gonna back out and then he's like no you can't do it you you know whatever um I Dude, can't. and i got up there I got up there and I got laughs and I never stopped. I loved it. And then I was like, okay, that just felt like right. It felt like where I was supposed to be. I still did improv a little while longer after that. Yeah. But I didn't have the same. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, you know, um, I enjoyed doing it. Like I said, I, I like entertaining, but I found stand up, and I appreciate them for that because I found stand up because of them. If that makes any sense. Because my instructor helped me. And I always credit him with that, too. Like, I still talk to him. And I'm like, you know what? I'm so glad that you got me out of my shell and got me on the stage because that was kind of the predecessor to me doing stand-up. Right. Like, there's two. They're totally different art forms, obviously. Yeah. But you're still on stage. You're still performing. You're still entertaining. So, like, when I say that, the open the doing the stand up just felt right where I realized what I was supposed to be doing. That wasn't like knocking that by any means, but no, I found what was for me. Yeah, yeah. So then I just never stopped, and then I remember like I loved it, and I just started showing up every week. I was inviting all my friends. It's like, okay, so what's next? Yeah. I started meeting some. What, what do we do next? Right. And then they're like, well, now you go to Comedy Zone. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, so then I started going to Comedy Zone. Yep. And I was just hungry. It's like, yeah. what's next? Yeah. What's next? And they're like, well, maybe somebody will put you in a show. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, like what's next? Yeah. Like, I just like, That's I just wanted great. more. That's more. exactly how I felt about it. The what's next thing. Yeah. Um, it was so exciting because you start at Comedy Zone. Um, and that, that, yeah, that's exactly how I, I, I had that, you know, motivation to be like, okay, like where else, you know, could you do it? Like, okay, maybe Asheville, mm-hmm. maybe Atlanta. Maybe Columbia. Like, it was so, like, this this whole world, mm-hmm. there's, like, and it can go, you know, so many different places. But, uh, yeah, I think if you have that, you kind of found the right thing. You yeah. Know? If you have that impulse to be like, okay, how, uh, like, how do I get better here? Yeah. You know. Um, and then I started, then I started producing shows shortly after that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I that's the next thing you can do yeah yeah I started yeah and then it's like hey you know what and just learning mm-hmm. meeting people mm-hmm. learning how things work and you know p- producing a show is also something yeah. that you can't just do you have to learn like people think that it's just a stage and a mic and an audience no no stressful it's stressful it's a lot of work mm-hmm. and you are the liaison between the comics the venue and the audience yep and you know, there's a um, strategy to how you do a lineup. And it's, it's, like you just said, stressful. It's easier when someone just invites you to do a show, do a gig. Yeah. My own shows, it's like, whew, it's like, a, so, like if you say, hey, would you like to perform blah, blah, blah this night here? Certainly. So much easier to show up than to, yeah. that, to do a show. You just show up with clothes on and yeah. your set memorized and you, you yeah. can't really go yeah. wrong. I mean, your set could go bad, I guess, but yeah, it's very true. Hosting is another thing that kind of involves, you know, it's not like hosting a mic 
that involves a little bit of responsibility and stress that you don't have is just showing up and doing a set, you know, mm-hmm. if more, it's more stress to produce a show. Oh, totally. Um, and plus, but, you know, you can't control people. Mm-hmm. Um, as a comedian, you're a free agent. Mm-hmm. So you don't know always what somebody's going to show up and do. Right. But if it's your show, you're, you know, yeah, the buck Anything stops goes with, wrong. It's you. Yeah. You're getting the call. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to bring the equipment sometimes. You got to supply. Yeah. And sometimes, and it's like, you love when you have positive feedback. Mm -hmm. It's like, you you know, people like, oh, I like this one. Do you want to know who I didn't like? No. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, sometimes it's like, oh my God, because you get all the accolades and then you also get the the negativity too. Yeah. And you know, everybody's an expert on everything. It's like, this is what he should have said. And it's like, it's like really, yeah. You, you, like you know, yeah. Feedback's <laughs> it's like, interesting. It's so funny how you you're gonna get everything. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how some people are just so free with unsolicited advice, and yeah. Feedback, especially in comedy, it's like, all right. So yeah, that, yeah. That, that's yeah. That's how I yeah. I guess that's how I got to. That was my long winded story telling you how I found stand up. How you found stand up? Yeah. Well, no. I, so I, I making love that story. So being in the house, making soap, joining mm-hmm. Alchemy. Yep. Then getting challenged to do an open mic. Mind you, like I told you, six of us from the class at Alchemy, we were supposed to do open mic. Two of us showed up, and I'm the only one still doing it. Yeah. From that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they have other people who perform stand up in, in, in house, though. Yeah. And sometimes they still invite me to perform there. It's okay. a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. They do, um, they still do um, shows where they will have a guest comedian mm-hmm. come and perform. So you might be hearing from them soon. Okay, I'll throw your name out there. Yeah, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you know, I, I got some, you know, I got some friends inside. Yeah, no, that'd, <laughs> that'd be great, man. I've been curious about alchemy for a while. I think improv would be a way to help, you know. Yeah, make yourself more dynamic it, on stage, do different things, and it helps you with um, spontaneity. Spontaneity. Yes. Yeah. That's a really good base to have for. Because basically, you're, because it's improv. You're, you're that, w- spontaneity is improvising. Yeah. Well, tell me if this is right, because I'm, I'm, this is uh, how I picture it going. Like, you're solving a puzzle, building on what somebody else had said, trying to make it funny in the moment, right? Like yeah, you're, yeah you're taking a suggestion, right. and you're creating a scene. You're creating right. a world. And, 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 and one of the reasons why I actually stopped doing it, like I told you, I found stand-up. I loved it. But for me, there's a lot of um, cues because you're working with other people. And me being um, low vision, Mm -hmm. it it was a little stressful. Sure. Um, And I felt like I joined it for fun. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was a little more stressful for me. Yeah. Then it was. So, like I said, I enjoy I I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I did it. I made friends there while I was there. Mm -hmm. Um, But the just the um you know the art form it took a lot out of me being that i couldn't see yeah and also the, the audience is first and foremost so you know you want to give them their all your all yeah and um you know there's i don't want to get too technical but there's certain techniques that you have to do and you know i didn't get a lot of the visuals sure you know um yeah. and people would always say oh really you sure you were so great when you're on stage it's like yeah that just because i can do it doesn't mean that i enjoyed it, if that makes any sense, yeah. Like it was hard, yeah. Because I can't, and people would say, "Well, yeah, you you, you made it look easy." Well, that, right. that's the point. But yeah, so there are certain things that um, it's like, who is this? But yeah, so it's like, nah. I think I I think um, you know, I I, I did it long enough, and yeah. you know, they understood. Yeah, for sure. It was fun though. Yeah, I um, the 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 process of coming up with things you know, based on audience suggestions in the moment in front of people is basically identical to crowd work. Yes. You know, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Cause that's another thing I want to tackle. I never do a lot of crowd work because I can't see the crowd. Sure. You so, could still ask questions though. Yes. But I haven't tackled, like I haven't really dove into it, you and know, cause you, I still, you could just be like, Oh, one at a time. I can't see you. Or like, you know. Yeah, so that's one down, of the things. Settle down. I, it's one of these days I said, I just want to just go off the cuff, go off script, and just do some crowd work. You should. So that's a goal of mine. You should. Absolutely. I bet you know, you we so get, we so get used to, you know, what we know works. Right. 
because obviously you just want to do a great set. You just want to do so well you get com- right. At a certain level. So sometimes you don't take those risks. Yeah, because it, it it's just that it's risky. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the risk taking. I uh, I'm addicted to that part of it, which is which is fun. The um, that first time, the story about your first time. The guy that insisted that you get up and do it. Yes. I feel like everybody who does stand-up needs that. Yeah. Because you can put this off forever. Yeah. You know, I got a buddy in Atlanta who, uh, James Mack, I don't know if he even listens to this. (laughs) But he said, oh, dude, I got, uh, I've always wanted to try stand-up. And you hear somebody say that, you're like, okay. But then he sent me a Google Doc of all of these jokes he had written over the years. And funny stuff. And uh, I was like, dude, you have to do it. You have to do it. And uh, I think he, we had that conversation probably, you know, over a year ago. Still hasn't done it. Well, you know what's so funny? You people a moment in your life where it makes sense or, or you're, you're just the type of person that is going to go through with it. But you got to do it. It's all about taking that first step. And some people never do. Well, you so know, it's so funny that it, you say that because it. there's a lot of people that think that I just say that to everyone where I say, you should do stand-up. You'll do great. Uh, I, you'll make a great comedian. They say, you probably say that to all your friends. I'm like, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are people that I will never convince. Because you know what? Here's the thing. Stand-up is an art form. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of funny people. Life is funny. Everything, you know, there's so many. You have friends mm-hmm. that you just talk to and you could just have a phone conversation with them and they'll make you laugh. But taking something funny and turning it into a set is a skill. Yeah, you know, so there's a lot of funny people, mm-hmm. but not everybody can entertain. Yeah, with that. Yeah, um, content. Yeah, if, for sure. If, you know what I mean? So um, there's some people that I try to encourage to do stand up, but there's it's that thing where people want to be taught how to do something. Yeah, like like we were just talking about improv. You teach improv. Mm-hmm. I think you learn stand up by doing it. Yeah, and yeah. um. Some people are like, and I think we probably all thought that mm-hmm. there was, a, I'm pretty sure you were at a point in your life where you were like, you look back, you thought like, wow, I can't imagine doing stand up. There was a point in my life where I would have thought that. Yeah. Was yeah, that, was, absolutely. That, yeah. Like I, I just, you didn't know that you had what it takes to do it. Like you, yeah. like, I didn't even know it was a possibility. Right. And, uh. I didn't even know what it would even look like, feel like, like, how do you get into it? How do you do it? Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, people say they want to be taught stand up. I've heard, you know, show up to Mike's for 10 years and then you maybe will know how. (laughs) (laughs) Really? Wow. Well, I think Jerry Seinfeld threw that number out. Like, why don't you just do it for 10 years and see where it goes? But there's nothing that you could be told Gary Shandling also said, there's literally no shortcut in stand up. You can be told advice. You can be coached through bits or like, maybe you should be this way, but nobody can teach you how to be confident, your authentic self and have a skill set right. that you can, you know, tap into because you've seen so many different types of audience. You just know how to be, so you can teach that. Well, that's a beautiful, that, that's a, a great point because that's another thing that I talk about all the time is you have to know your audience. You know, certain things work with different crowds. Yeah. And you can't blame the audience. No. Like, oh, wow, wow, this killed theirs. There's something wrong with you guys. Well, it's like, okay, switch it up. You got to do something different. Yeah. Deliver connect different. connect with them to be able to get away with the awful things you're saying. You <laughs> that's funny. That's probably... <laughs> Because I like fucked up stuff, you know. Um, dark. You like dark. dark. I like dark. Yeah, you know, you've heard. Yeah. So I, I have to be as likable as possible, and as I have to be as honest as possible, even if what I'm saying is offensive, to get people to to get on board. And sometimes they don't. But I actually had a gig where they asked me to not talk about being gay. Yeah. Because it was a very religious, community. religious, clean type of show. Yeah, and it was like, okay, well, yeah. So you know, I don't ever want you never want to be a one trick pony no people were acting like people put it on the venue either you know right so, people were like were you offended why did you perform there it's like well they hey i i just talk about it you know you can't you have to have a lot a lot of stuff under your hat yeah like i can't like everything about me isn't 
blind, 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 Mm -hmm. or gay, 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 or -hmm. black, black, black. Obviously, um, that's a part of who I am, but Mm -hmm. that's not everything I'm talking about. Yeah. So if they ask me to not talk about being gay, then I... Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I prefer the shows where you can do whatever you want, but I've had to do some clean stuff and... It's, uh, or just family friendly, mm-hmm. you know, whatever they want. Um, but I don't want to do that. Those aren't my favorite jokes. But, right. you know, if you're a guest and that's the venue, you do their rules. Right. And that's all right. Well, people were, they were upset for me that that was asked. I was like, well, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fucked up. But, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but honestly, um, that was maybe not the best example, but a clear example of just being able to switch it up. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, that's okay. That happens. I'm pretty sure that's not, I hope I'm not the first person who's done that. And no, and I do that. Yeah, I do that. Uh, who's your favorite comedian of all time? Oh man. These are, I'm not going to tell you what, because it's going to, you're going to, I don't want to seem cliche or predictable, but, I don't care. We, the same names get brought up when I ask that often. So Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I yeah, love you know Eddie what? I should Murphy. be proud. Yeah, bro. Yeah, what what are you Murphy's ashamed just... of Eddie Murphy? No, people always like. Sometimes comedians try to like dig deep and like say somebody obscure. Or, you know, they try to be so. Yeah. The famous guys are famous for a reason. I like the way you said that. Yeah. Uh, okay. They wouldn't be like a lot of people. That's how they become great is the recognition. See, if I ever meet Eddie Murphy, like we have to like delete this podcast because he's like, aren't you the guy that was embarrassed to say you like me? It's like, get the hell out of here. Yeah, <laughs> Eddie Murphy raw. And just, you know, in his movies, he's hysterical. I wish he performed still. I don't see, or is he doing stand up still? He hasn't done it in a long time. Okay. I had heard rumors that he was back on stage. I heard he was a very bashful person in real life. Yeah. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Well, you know, a lot of comedians ain't all the way right anyway. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. I got issues. You know. Yeah. We, yeah, we all we got, do. We got our shit. Yeah. But, um, you know, being introverted is one thing, but I actually heard that he had taken a big break from comedy and was kind of gun shy about coming back. Kind of like. Like what we you, were talking about? Yeah. Like you got over it and got back on, but you know. That's 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 the fear. Like you never. I don't know that talking about my experience in the same realm as talking about Eddie Murphy's yeah, you're experience. Basically is Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, like yeah, Eddie Murphy's going through what you were going through, Kenneth. Yeah, Kenneth that, is uh, as good as Eddie Murphy. That's what he's claiming. I have. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> you don't have people throwing rocks at me, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, me too for taking a week and a half off. That's basically makes us the same. What week did you take off? Oh, um, just uh, I'll take a, a vacation in the summer where I go to Michigan and there's not a lot of mics up there or like during Christmas. Yeah. So, yeah, taking a week off is, I don't think that's time off. You, not, you were just on vacation. Really. It's not really. Yeah. And I wasn't taking, yeah, I, I, it, it was like a scheduled vacation. I know it wasn't like I'm taking this time off to like reconsider comedy or anything. But, you um, just missed it during that week. It was well, just a long ass week. I really missed it. Um, I went to Europe recently, and um, that was so fun. Um, but the uh, I, there was a couple of days afterwards where it was like a week and a half, and coming back from that was hard. Um, but just just you know extra nerves and stuff getting back on stage. But uh, I also remember walking to the comedy zone that Thursday. Uh, for my first time in a long time and it was like i don't even know if i remember how to do like this is weird people <laughs> walking up steps going to an attic and you you're know, funny we're all yeah. gathering to watch this like what are we doing like this is a thing this is cool i hope i don't suck like all of those thoughts as opposed to when you're in a routine and you're going up on stage multiple nights a week it's less weird but you know well i can tell you i learned early on mm-hmm always know that someone's watching yeah i remember going to a mic it was an open mic and i had been drinking okay and you know i was tipsy Uh not buzzed Uh but you don't want to be drunk on stage yeah because it's never gonna no bad idea bad idea and this was not 
a gig or anything. This is before like I got gigs. Mm -hmm. But I remember I had some friends who had never seen me perform before. <laughs> and it was just about my turn to go to the mic. And I didn't know they were coming. And a bunch of friends come in. And I'm like, oh, crap. You found out right before you went on stage? Yes. Oh, that's And that's worst. when I realized that is the worst. All every I would never go on stage unprepared ever again. I would never no. And and not like I'm like I wasn't like shit faced or anything. I just knew that I wasn't at my best. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, always be your best. Someone's yeah. always watching. You never know who's gonna be in the room. And I yeah. felt like, oh my god, this is the first time they're gonna see me. And I was like, uh, so yeah. It's like, uh, from that moment, yeah, I realized, okay, never again. Yeah, somebody's always watching, and because obviously, you know, it's opposite of like life, mm -hmm. where oh, who cares if people judge me? No, this is what we do. Yeah, to be judged. Yeah. So people are you expect to be judged. Yeah. You want to always be your best when you're on stage. Yeah. And I, I no, felt that's like a good point about I, the preparation. I'm and never being, gonna do that again. Yeah. Because like, I go back and forth because I like to not over prepare and then be too uh, anxious about how it's received. I think mm. while I try to like the best way I think is probably to like prepare your ass off and then let go when you're up there. Just trust your preparation. Mm. And don't be overly like mechanical when you are mm. actually delivering your your material. Yeah. Be free when you're when the lights are on, but you know, um, because that authenticity helps sell the set. Whatever you're doing, right? Just being free and in the moment. And also, you know, but you also got to be ready. Because and being if you, don't, be, if you come up there without any jokes or without any plan, or or maybe you know, drinking a little bit or just so yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Being drunk early, when you're drunk, then you'll you, fuck yourself and you'll deserve it. Like, right? <laughs> like, like when you're drunk. You think you're good, but you're not. Yeah. Like you, like I mean, just like in conversation, you could, you know, you're yeah. like you, you, you feel like, why am I? You know, I, I feel like I sound so stupid. Yeah. Well, you probably do. <laughs> yeah. See, fortunately, like I quit drinking before I started stand up, so I've never had the experience of being drunk on stage yeah. or high on stage or anything. Yeah. Nope. Influence. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, um. Yeah, it was one of those things. I was at a mic, didn't know if I was gonna go up or not, and then you know, I you put my name, and then you know, because it wasn't a lot of people there, and I had you know been you know drinking like, and then all of a sudden crowds come in, and I was like, oh shit, yeah. like you know, I thought it was gonna be like a dead room, yeah. But always remember, somebody's always watching. Yeah, yeah, you should never because. Um, but yeah, I'll allow myself a cocktail or two before a set, mm -hmm. but I know I am not going to be drunk on stage. Yeah, that's fine. Drink or two. Yeah. Probably good. Somebody, I, I, what's up? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I had um, gone to someone's show recently as a um, patron, mm -hmm. just as an audience member, I was, uh, and but I had come from a party, uh -huh. so we had been drinking all day or whatever, and someone didn't show up. They asked me if I wanted to perform i was like i'm so sorry i've been drinking like i just i don't want to be that guy on stage not prepared yeah absolutely that's a good call the other thing that's funny you said is like uh you could write off a show because nobody's there and then all of a sudden people show up <laughs> that's and you're like shit like i've had that like yeah you know there'll be an open mic you'll be like all oh, right nobody's here i don't want to be that nervous then people yeah. start showing up and you yeah for you should probably give it your best Go and these people were matter. yeah that's what? exactly what happened and these people were friends of mine yeah. that like oh yeah we're gonna we, yeah we knew you. they came to see me perform and i was like yeah yikes and then it's like how do you explain that that's that wasn't my best you know yeah. you don't want to be yeah that. no you can't explain it away yeah. that's the thing when people I, yeah family and friends i get tons of anxiety but so. that is that's a lesson learned those yeah. are good lessons to learn oh they're great like, they make you better if yeah. you suck in front of your family there's very few things that are worse than that so like you should be pretty free on stage i remember yeah i had that happen to me once sometimes you want um you know you want people to like um stay in their lane though yeah. one time i did um comedy at our a family reunion yeah and the mc kept saying soon 
uh, Kenneth Hughes is going to take the mic. He's going to give you uh, whatever he said, uh, uh, uninterrupted entertainment. And it's like I, you're building it up. He built it up. He he built it up for like uh, it's like, dude, stop. Yeah. Like, let me do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, and it was like, but it was funny because, but sometimes people will like, um, and I'm not going to say overhype, but it was like, dude, like just l- let them know that I'm going to be doing stand up right before yeah. I'm going to be doing stand up. You don't have to say it like every five minutes cause you're wearing them out with it yeah. and they're probably tired <laughs> before yeah. it started. Yeah. That's funny. I hear you, man. Well, dude, guess what? What's up? It's an hour and 30 minutes. So, oh yeah. So what, we're halfway through. No, we're basically, <laughs> <laughs> we could be, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, got your ride coming and everything. Well, thank you for having me. Well, dude, this flew by. Like, Are you we know, still on? Yeah, we're still on. We're so, still yeah, on. okay. I, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my pleasure, man. I'm glad uh, I'm glad uh, you came by. And I'm glad, shout out Lane Wilson. She recommended. Um, we, oh, we really? Oh, hell, Lane yeah, is gonna, my girl. I was going to ask you anyway. I love Lane. She's been on a previous episode, too. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's still, like, I think we're on episode, this week's was episode 71. So mm-hmm. we've interviewed a lot of people. Um, oh, shoot. Hold on, Kenna. The mic unplugged. Fancy. You're good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, man, it's been great. Um, do you want to shout out anything? I'll link all your social media stuff so people can find you. But um, shout out anything to promote. Well, we got the the fundraiser, but yes. Well, okay. Um, well, you know, I have the show at Hoppin called oh. Hilariously Hoppin. Is this a new show? Or has uh, this been going a while? It's been going since um july okay i'm late on that yeah you're a little to that you're a little late yeah you should come I, i'm 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 paused until after the first of the year though because of football season oh okay. my show is sunday and if we've been having a hard time competing with those football games oh, man yeah. you know there's a lot of football fans around here yeah. so i'm gonna take a break um until after the first of the year but it's every fourth sunday at happen okay downtown greenville 120 north markley street however while i'm on break i'm doing open mics okay every second and fourth sunday okay so the next one will be october 9th okay um yeah so if you want a mic if you want to um take the challenge and and do what um, Mr. Baker and I have done, <laughs> and, or just uh, if you already an established comedian who just want to perfect your craft, come on down, see us at Hoppin. Sign up starts at six thirty, second and fourth Sunday. Okay. However, we're not going to be there next Sunday because I have a movie premiere. Movie premiere. Yes, it's called Order Up. Order Up. It's going to premiere at um, Camelot Theater. Okay. McAllister Square. Excellent. Um, and that will be on social media. That's great. It's going to be a screening, free screening for all. Real quick, what's the movie about? Uh, you share the just general, like, I don't want to spoil it, but. There is someone who aspires to be a stand-up comedian in the movie. Is that you? No. No, okay. Uh, however, we there were some local, there are some local comedians um, in the film. Who's in the film? Um myself uh-huh it's starring lovely big o okay and um we have lane white wilson as okay. we talked about before yeah kenneth e hughes yeah monica scott rogers oh bobo yeah love it i think our scene is probably about a minute and 30 seconds but i'm still that's, happy <laughs> that's great. That's i'm great. still happy to have it um so um i am um, I feel silly for not knowing the time by heart because I didn't know that I was going to be able to do this shout out. Okay. But um, it will be on social media. But yes, Camelot Theaters um, next Sunday, which will be the, help me out. Oh, I don't have my phone on me. I okay. Yes. It's going to be late the, September, early October. Next Sunday is, what's today? Uh, the 19th, I think. Oh, we can do this, man. We can do this. We, we can, can do, do this. this. We can do this. Okay. So 19 plus 7 is 26. So the next Wednesday is the 26th. This is taking way too much time. Sunday, Camelot Theater, <laughs> free to all family and friends, family friendly, um, support local comedy movie. Also, hilariously hopping. 
uh, uh, open mic every second and fourth Sunday until I return. Um, and I'm going to have the regular stand up comedy showcase. And if you want to participate in me and Buddy's fundraiser, you can also find that on my social media. Okay. Uh, follow you on Instagram. What's your Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter? Okay. Kennethy Hughes. Kennethy Hughes. All right. Dude, thanks so much for coming, man. Really it was a pleasure. Um, I was very entertained just by having this discussion. And Yeah, they're um, fun, aren't they? Just hanging out with you. Yeah, good deal. Well, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. Bye, guys.